is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. The title for this uh, morning's message is uh, His goodness is unfailing. His goodness is unfailing. Hallelujah. The word of God tells us or describes his goodness as glory. In the 34th chapter of Exodus, when, Mo when Moses called out to God and said, Show me thy glory. And God answered, saying, I will send my goodness before you. So, where the glory is, the goodness of God is. Hallelujah. We go forward and see what this message is going to store for us. Psalms chapter 103, verses 11 and 12. Psalms chapter 103, verses 11 and 12. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgression from us. Let us stand and pardon us for the God. My Father, we thank and praise you, Father, for this uh, precious word. Hallelujah. We give you the glory, Lord Jesus. Reveal to us the truth from this word. And strengthen our spirit that we may live a life of the name of the Son. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. His goodness is unfailing. The topic title. His goodness is unfailing. In other words, His goodness is always available for us. Psalms 103, 11 and 12 says, as we read just now, as heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. The one who honors him, the one who respects him, the one who walks according to God's word, and the one who fears him. Towards them, God's word says, his mercy is so great, not just the mercy, not just saying that his mercy is there for them, his mercy is a so great. Hallelujah. Mercy means a miracle working power. Mercy means his mercy comes from when he has compassion. When Jesus walked on this earth, the Bible says Jesus had compassion on his lepers. While he, his compassion flowed, the miracle flowed. The mercy of God is upon everyone who is born again. Everyone who is born again has His mercy. That's why it says, as far as the east is from the west, so far hath He removed our transgression from us. First we see the comparison of heaven and the earth. How great is His mercy. As the distance between heaven and the earth, that so great is His mercy. How He has removed the transgression from us, as east is so far away from the west. The transgression which He removed from us is far away, is gone, is nowhere to be seen. So, for everyone who is born again, whose sins are forgiven, on them the mercy of God will manifest. Where there is sin, there is no mercy. Amen? That's why the word of God says, all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. As long as somebody is in, this, in, a, in a life of sin, they are short of the glory. The minute your transgressions have been forgiven, your sins have been forgiven, God says, you're coming to the place of mercy, where you can see miracles working power. That means, if miracles are not happening, 
in a believer's life. We need to check our heart. There should be something which is keeping us away from the miracle. Right? Something which must be keeping us away from the miracle. Because there is something which is blocking the miracle. For everyone who is born again, the Bible says, his mercy is so great. The so God was rich in mercy and great in love. So, if you read Micah 7, 19 and 20. He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities. And thou will cast all their sins in the depths of the sea. Thou will perform the truth to Jacob and the mercy to Abraham, which thou hast sworn unto our fathers from the days of old. Micah chapter 7, the last chapter, the last two verses. Talks about God will have compassion upon us and he will subdue all our iniquities. And what will happen? Our sin will be Thou will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. Where the sins have been cast away? Into the depths of the sea. In other words, you cannot ever see it anymore. It has been cast into the depths of the sea. Has anyone uh, normally can see the depths of the sea? No, you can see it. Only the divers, if they go down to the depths of the sea, they can walk on the uh, floor or the bed of the sea or ocean. But normally, no man can see the depth of the floor or the bed of the sea. So God has put all our sins into the depths of the sea. That we will not see it anymore. That's like he says, I will not remember your sins anymore. God says, you also can't see your sin anymore. I've taken it and I've put it into the depths of the sea. What a transformation. For a man who has been living in sin all his life, the minute you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, all your sins are forgiven. He washes you with his precious blood and his mercy comes down and you are transformed into your new creature. A new creature who's called as the sons of God, who was born into the family of God, who has received the favor of God, who is honored by God for your faith in Jesus. The Lord God Almighty honors every man who puts their faith in Jesus. Why? It is God's work and plan and operation through Jesus at the cross. As we know, it is through Adam, sin entered this world. And we also know, it was God's wisdom, that only through a man, this sin can be removed from this world. No man is worthy for that. Because a man who can remove the sin from this world, should not have sin at all. All men have sinned and they have come short of the glory of God. That's what the Bible says. That is why it was necessary for God himself to come down, leaving his glory behind and came as a man. And in his flesh, in his body, the sins were put upon him. And all the sin of the world, mankind, he bore upon his body. And he received the wages of sin, which is death. He was buried and on the third day he rose again to justify this mankind. To say, listen, devil, all their wages for sin I have taken away. I have received it and I have conquered death. And I am justifying them, saying, yes, yes. There is no more sin in their life. They are just as if they have never sinned. In other words, the status of Adam before his sin 
we have come to that place. God has brought mankind to that place. In other words, when Adam was in the Garden of Eden, before his sin, we are in that place. How to be accepted the Lord Jesus. This is the knowledge, the revelation, which we need to have in our spirit about our own self. Who are we? Who are we? We are born again. Our sins are forgiven. Our transgressions have been removed. It is like a east and west. How far it is. It has been removed so far away. And our sins have been put in the depths of the sea. We can see it no more. And the Lord Jesus himself, God himself, has come to this earth as man to forgive our sins, take our sins upon himself and remove sin from this world that he may justify us and make us as if we have never sinned. Why? That his mercy can flow into our life. His miracle working power can flow into our life. Without the glory we cannot see his mercy. There is only either glory or shame. Okay? The glory is in the place where there is no sin. Shame is the place where there is sin. Okay? So while we are now the righteousness of God, the glory is covering us. The glory is covering us. So we are in the place where we can receive that so great mercy, so it says that our great our his mercy is so great. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him, who has respect for him, who honors him. Mercy is what? Miracle working power. The miracle working power will work in everyone's life who walks according to God's word, honors God's word, acts in faith according to God's word. We'll read that verse. The second part of Micah 7 19. Thou wilt perform the truth to Jacob and the mercy to Abraham, which thou hast sworn unto our fathers from the days of old. Micah 7 20. So God will perform the truth in whose life? We who were deceivers before we knew Jesus, he has made us his people, his people, God's people, his wife, God at once. He's changed us because of his truth. He'll perform the truth in our life. What is performing the truth in our life? What is the truth? What is the truth? The truth is that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, is the Son of the Living God. He is Christ. When Peter said this, when Jesus asked, Who am I? What do people say? Everyone said, Oh, you people say that you are this prophet. But what do you say? Peter said, I am telling you this. You are the Son of the Living God and you are Christ. And immediately, Jesus said, Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but by you have received this revelation from my Father in heaven. And immediately, next line says, On this truth will I build my church. A lot of teachers of the Bible, without understanding, they say, This truth means, oh, Peter means rock, which must be on that uh, Peter only we will build a church, not Peter. The truth is that Christ is the Messiah, is the Christ, he is the one who came to save us. He is the son of the living God. Anyone who has this truth, that truth will perform a miracle in his life and they will be transformed into the children of God. Church is what? The place of transformation. On this truth will I build my church. That's what Jesus said. The church is what? A place of transformation. Men becoming sons of God. Right. Human nature 
transforming into divine nature. A place where we were in shame, we received double honor. It's a place, the church. That is why church, it, it is so important to go to church. It's so important to be a part of the church. Well, that is the place the true living God transforms human kind. The, the entire human race is only transformed in the church. I will perform the truth to Jacob. Jacob is a deceiver. As we were earlier, we were deceivers. We were enemies of God. That's what the Bible says. I'm teaching what the Bible says. Jacob is, Jacob means, name, the meaning of the name is deceiver. God says, we were enemies of the commonwealth of Israel. We were enemies of God. We were reconciled at the cross. When we accepted the plan and operation of God through Christ Jesus, we were reconciled unto God. And then we made peace with God. We entered into the presence of God because of the blood which was shed at the cross as a price for our redemption from the power of the enemy, the devil. When Adam sinned, every, the entire human race had gone to the bondage of sin and they were un and each and every uh, man who was born in this place has come under the power of darkness. Colossians 1.30 says that who delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of the dear son. Bible is very, very clear. That's why it is called as the gospel truth. Many say, oh you know, this, this is the gospel truth, even without knowing what they are saying. See the TV is a lot of politicians also use this. Without knowing they say, oh this you may say this is the gospel truth that way. Gospel is the only truth. Gospel is the only truth. That's why it's called as gospel truth. What does gospel mean? Gospel means good news. Where is the good news? The good news is about the true God who made heaven and the earth. What is the plan of that God for humankind? That is the good news. You who are under bondage, who you are, who are under sickness and you are under poverty and shame and who are under the power of death and the power of darkness, God who came to deliver you from the power of the devil and who has translated you into a new kingdom, which is the kingdom of the dear son. Although you are still in this world, there is a shift in the spiritual realm in your life. You have been removed in the spiritual realm from the power of the devil. And you have been put into the place where God's kingdom is. The kingdom of God. And the kingdom of the dear son Jesus. This happens in a fraction of a second. All because you believe in your heart. Say, I believe my father in heaven. I believe my God in your operation. And you send Jesus onto this earth for my sake. And Jesus had taken away all my sins. He has forgiven all my sins. And he was buried. He died on the cross and he was buried. And on the third day he rose again to justify me. Just as I have never said. All these are spiritual understanding. Only who are in the spirit will understand this. If you understand this and if you say Amen and say Lord I believe. <clears throat> then happens the transformation. No one can force you to get into the kingdom of the dear son. Nobody can transform you other than God himself. If you are accepted the Lord Jesus, if you are born again, if you are taking immersion baptism, it is not because of anyone. If anybody has forced you, that means you are not born again. The transformation has to come in your spirit. It should come in your heart. Saying, I believe this. This is the truth. I don't need anyone to say anything because I know what the Bible says. And Bible is the word of God that I believe. 
Therefore, I take word, God's word as the only authority in my life and I submit to this word, which is the truth. That is how your transformation takes place. It is not a joke. It is not, spiritual life is not a joke. Spiritual life is serious. It is not a play thing for anyone to play any, uh, any, any, uh, uh, any uh, tricks. There is something very really serious between you and God. If you accept the Lord Jesus, you will reach heaven. If you don't accept the Lord Jesus, your destination is not heaven. There is something else called as hell, maybe. Those who don't accept the Lord Jesus till the last minute of their death, they are destined to go to hell. Everyone who accepts the Lord Jesus, they accept the plan of God. They accept the operation of God. They say, Lord God Almighty who has created heaven and the earth, this is the plan you have kept for mankind. I know what happened on this earth through your word, the Bible. So I give my heart to obey this. For this is the truth. That is what it says. Thou will perform the truth to Jacob. Who is that? This is Jacob is that? We who were before we were born again. Right? You may be a pastor's son. Right? You may be a priest's son. You may be a Jew. You may be whoever you are. But if you don't have a personal repentance, saying, Lord, I repent. I ask for forgiveness for all my sins. And I submit to you. I submit to your word. And I want you, Lord Jesus, in my life. That is when transformation takes place. That truth will change a Jacob, who is a deceiver to God's people. The called out ones. The ones who are called out from the world into the kingdom of the dear son. That's what it says. And now it says, and thou will perform the truth to Jacob. And again, if you read from the beginning, it says, thou will perform the mercy to Abraham. You cut it and read it. Thou will perform the truth to Jacob. Again, you start from the beginning. Thou will perform the mercy to Abraham. Now, what did Abraham do to find God's mercy? What did Abraham do? He believed in the true God. Am I right? He believed in God's word. So once you believe in God and his word, you are in the place to receive the mercy or the miracle working for. The miracles happen in your life because of your faith in God and the faith in the word of God. Mercy comes down. When they believed, they went to Jesus. When Jesus was on this earth, they went to Jesus and said, Heal me, cleanse me. Immediately the compassion, the mercy came and immediately they were cleansed, they were healed. Why? They put their faith in Jesus. They put their faith in the Messiah. They put their word, faith in the word of God. He is the word of God. Immediately the mercy came down and the miracle working power transformed their life. They were healed, they were delivered, they were cleansed. So the mercy comes down while you have faith in God and His Word. It says, uh, This is a promise which God has given to our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So now let us go to Galatians 3.15. Brother, and I speak up to this manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man is another or added thereto. So, covenant means agreement. It says, Paul the Apostle says here, I talk like a man. If there is an agreement which is made between two human beings on this earth, God's word says, nobody can annul that agreement. And nobody can add to the agreement because after reading that agreement, right, do you sign the agreement without reading? You agree to all the terms and conditions in that agreement and you say, yes, I concur and then you sign that. 
the other part you also signs it. So nobody can add or nobody can annul anything which is inside that. It will be as it is. Now, the man itself is so clear. How much more God will be clear about his covenant for us, which he made at the cross by shedding his blood. The covenant, the salvation, the five things and so and so, which is salvation, which is in deliverance, healing, protection, preservation, and all soundness and goodness of God in your life. All the five things has to be present in our life, which is a complete salvation. For that, what we need to do? We need to conform to the covenant. We should say, Lord, I believe the covenant. I believe the covenant which you made in my life through shedding of your blood. Nothing can be annulled in that, nothing can be added into that. But what is written, according to what it is written in the word of God, the covenant between God and man, that will be standing as it is. Because it is sealed by the blood of Jesus. When will it come to pass in your life? The minute you accept the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus, the mercy of God. You are opening your life to the mercy of God. You are opening your life to see miracles, supernatural life. Miracles is basically supernatural life. The people of the world, when you say, Oh, this happened to me, you know, if you say that to them, they say, What nonsense, this can never happen. Because they have never seen miracles. They have never seen a supernatural thing in their life. It is nothing, I mean, don't have to be surprised when they don't agree with you. Because we know that they have not seen a miracle in their life. I was like that. When I, when I accepted the Lord Jesus, I saw many people's miracles, many miracles in people's life. I said, oh, this is an awful, awesome God. There's so many miracles which are happening. I want this God in my life. Well, I've never seen all my life such miracle. It is not because I received a miracle, because I saw the miracles. Right? How do you get faith in Jesus? When you hear the testimonies, when you see, oh, other people get miracles in their life and you believe that there's been a power of God, there's a work of God in their life, then you get faith for your miracle. By ignoring or trying to say, no, 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 these things will not happen, the, pe the people who say that they are just fooling themselves. They're keeping themselves away from a beautiful, awesome life where the mercy of God can flow into their life and they can see the supernatural work of God. Supernatural is above the natural, beyond the natural. Supernatural, God kind of life that can happen only when the mercy of God comes, and the mercy of God will come only while you accept the Lord Jesus. So that is what it says: the covenant which God makes, He will never change. But we need to agree with that covenant and do everything according to that word by faith, so that mercy of God can come down. All right? Mercy means miracle working. For every sin, for by his time you are healed, the healing truth, you need to agree with God and his word and hold on to God's word, revealing your faith upon his word to bring down his miracle working power. It may take a time, a little time, but if you hold on, it will certainly come to pass. God wants to check your faith. How long you can hold on? How long you trust in Him? How long you are holding on to the Word of God? The revelation in your spirit will bring down the mercy. The revelation in your spirit is the faith that you put upon God in this Word. That will bring down the mercy, mercy of God. The miracle working power of God. Those who faint, they lose. You say, oh it's not happening. Let me try some other ways. They will lose the opportunity to see the miracle. Hallelujah. Many times, many are threatened because of death. The devil say, you will die. Be careful. What did God say? You will not die. 
What did the word of God say in 118 Psalm 118? Psalmist said, I will not die, but I will live to declare the works of the Lord Jesus. Now that I will live means that I am not going to die, I am going to get healed, I am going to get delivered, and I am going to live a supernatural life because of the mercy of God, and I am going to declare this testimony to the whole nation. Why? When they hear this testimony, they will know there is a God in the midst of us who works in miracles. How do you understand the true God is in the midst of us? Unless you see this type of mercy of God in your life, the miracle working power of God. His goodness is unfailing. Why? He wants every man on this earth to understand who he is, who the true God is. Accept him and accept him as a Lord and Savior so that they will not go to hell. It is not God's will that anyone should go to hell. That is why he himself came down and died at the cross for our sake. That no man should go to hell. <clears throat> but still, it is a choice. You accept the Lord Jesus by your own will and choice, then you will see the mercy of God in your life. If you resist and reject it, no. you lose the opportunity to see the mercy of God, the miracle working power of God. In 4th chapter of 16th verse in Hebrews, it says, <clears throat> Take that. Hebrews chapter 4, 16. <clears throat> come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain, let us come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and to receive grace to help at the time of need. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy, to receive grace, to help at the time of need. Mercy. To obtain mercy. Why do you go to the throne of grace? To obtain mercy. If you have to obtain mercy in your life, you need to go to the throne of grace. Sometimes we kneel down in prayer the throne of God is before us. Sometimes we stand and lift our hands. We are standing before the throne of God. Sometimes you may be driving or you may be in the kitchen or you may be doing some other office work. But still your heart is in the presence of God. You are praying. That time spiritually you are before the throne of God. And God's mercy will come down. For you have come to obtain before the throne of grace to obtain the mercy of God. Will God say no? Anyone who comes in faith before his throne, they will obtain the mercy of God. Hallelujah. So, let us read Colossians chapter 2 verse 14. And we'll finish it. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances <coughs> that was against us, which is contrary to us, and it and took it out of the way, nailing it to this cross. And having spoiled and spoiled his powers, he made a show of them, openly triumphing over them on it on the cross. <coughs> Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances. The ordinances means there are certain laws which were supposed to operate in a person's life because of the sin or because of the things which were done, which is iniquity. Says God Himself has blotted out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. Why? The minute we accepted the Lord Jesus, those things were blotted out. They were earlier standing, it says, the standing against us, which was contrary to us. These things were against us and they were contrary to us. It was not the things which we want in our life. It was contrary to the things what we need in our life. We wanted blessing, 
But the curse was offered. We need the goodness of God, but we never received the goodness of God. There was severity, punishments coming in our life. Now God, when you accept the Lord Jesus, He blotted out all this handwriting which is standing against us and which are contrary to us. It says, and He took it out of the way and nailing it to the cross. Took it out of our way means it was blocking our path. It was keeping, it was standing as a mountain or it was standing as a block, not allowing us to go forward. He took it out and nailed it to the cross that it will not block anymore. In other words, everyone who has accepted the Lord Jesus, they have a thorough fair. They have a thorough fair. But it's only your guilt which could stand as a block. Right? It's only your guilt. If you feel guilty about something, what you did, you ask for forgiveness, still you don't believe that God has forgiven you. You still, the guilt is there. That means it's a block. You need faith. You need faith to receive forgiveness. Amen. You need faith to receive forgiveness. When God says, when you confess all your sins and unrighteousness, He is just and faithful to forgive you. Now, the minute you confess your sins and unrighteousness, and say, Lord, I did wrong now. I was, I sinned against you, as David said. Forgive me, Lord. With all your heart, with the repentance, you ask God for forgiveness. He looks at you and says, this heart has got repentance. This heart will never ever do this mistake anymore. Therefore, I forgive this person. Now, what's it? You have to have the heart to believe this forgiveness. So, everyone who doesn't believe in the forgiveness, but God has already given while you repent and ask for forgiveness, then there will be a block in your life. Because you still then have the faith to receive this forgiveness. You need to, for receiving the forgiveness, you need faith. That is when the block will be removed. You have a thorough faith. Blotting out the handwriting of the ordinances which are standing against us and with us contrary to us and take it away from the way and nailing it to the cross. And say that after that, and having spoiled the principalities and powers, and he had a show, he had a show of them openly triumphing upon it, upon the cross. Triumphing means taking victory. Triumph means somebody taking victory on somebody else's behalf. That is triumph. Jesus took victory upon at the cross for our sake. He didn't have to take victory. He ought to be victor. Am I right? He came down as a man and took victory at the cross for whose sake? For man's sake. For your sake. For my sake. Wow. He, having spoiled. Spoiled means he's destroyed. All the principalities and powers and wicked spirits that he had shown upon them openly. Had an open show of them. Put them to shame. You have no power anymore. You have been disarmed. Your, all your arms and ammunitions have been removed. Triumphing upon it. See, taking victory for us upon the cross. Now, are we ready to receive a miracle? Is there any block? The block is only in our mind. The block is in our heart. While we yet not believe that we have been forgiven. The enemy can try to come and remind you, say, listen, you did this mistake, you did this particular sin, you know that? What should, what should you say? I have asked for forgiveness from God in Jesus' name. And I believe in my heart and I have received the forgiveness by faith. Now the devil get behind me. 
Satan will get behind me. You can do nothing to me. You cannot block. It is coming to put the guilt in your heart. So that you can put the block before you and bring you back to the place where you were earlier. That is what he was trying. Am I? But if you give in to it, but if you are very clear, I know that I know that I know that I know I am forgiven. My sins are gone. I have no block before me. All the handwriting of the ordinances which were against me and which are contrary to me has been nailed to the cross. He took victory for our sake. Make an open show of all the principalities and powers and wicked spirits. Now we are standing victorious. No failure. All the goodness of God can flow into our life like a dam which is opened. It can flow into our life because there is no block. It's a highway. It's a highway of holiness. And you walk with the fear of God. You walk in holiness. You walk in righteousness. There cannot be any block in your life. The goodness of God will flow like a flood into your life. When you have faith in God and His Word, the mercy of God will start manifesting. As it's manifested in Abraham's life, it will manifest in our life. But what you need for a transformation is the truth. As we were deceivers earlier, we became the children of God because of our faith on the truth. Jesus is the Son of God. He is the living God. He is the Messiah. He is Christ. We believe. We believe the truth. Because we believe the truth, we have been transformed from the power of darkness into the kingdom of the dear Son. The same way, with the truth that you have, the truth by His stripes you are healed. You know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, though He was rich, He became poor for our sake. And through His poverty, He has made us rich. When you put the faith in this word, you become rich. If you put faith in the word and say, by his stripes I'm healed. The devil will come and try to go on telling you, no, no, this will not work, this will not. You say, no, 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 it has worked already 2000 years ago at the cross. I am healed. I am rich. Now you get behind me, Satan, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. That is faith. And this faith will take you to the place and destination of the promise which is the goodness of God getting healing is the goodness of God becoming rich is the goodness of God don't doubt don't try to question you may say I don't have anything God can bring abundance in your life you may say I don't even work how will I see abundance you don't need to work it is God who has worked at the cross for you I don't have anything to do. How will I get the blessing? Somebody is going to come and bless you. God will send someone to bless you. But don't forget who blessed you. It's not that person. It is the Lord Jesus. You honor him and the fear of the Lord and say, Lord, I will never, I will never let you go from my life. I will hold on to you like Jacob held on to you and said, I will never let you go till you bless me. I will hold you so tight and I will continue to see the goodness of God in my life. Amen. That's Hallelujah. Unfailing goodness. Hallelujah. Lord, you send the word, heal them and death on them, their destruction. According to this word, Lord, hallelujah. Receive it. Hallelujah. Truth, Lord, hallelujah. The servant to the truth. Those days when we were not in a position to walk in the truth, for the lack of knowledge, we ask for forgiveness. We, have to, we ask, Father, have for forgiveness. We believe your forgiveness. Your forgiveness, in Jesus. For everyone who is forgiven, cleanse them in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Of that, blood of the heads of the soul, and they remain in righteousness. Lord Almighty, Lord Jesus, Lord, we pray, Father, and bless everyone who has heard this message. Fill them with your power, glory, anointing, strength, let their 
bless and run over. Hallelujah. Abundance in all areas of their life. Pray, Father, the truth which has come into their spirit, God will pray. Love, Lord Jesus, the enemy doesn't steal it up in their spirit. Hallelujah. Pray, Father, call them with your grace, and when they step out of this place, let them live a life of dominion. We pray and bless them. Amen, amen, amen.